In this 10 minute redesign, I am going to redesign a submission from design newsletter reader Gene Azaro. These are the transaction screens from Spend Week, which is an app for tracking your spending. Spoiler alert, here is the before and here is the after. By the way, hi, I'm Eric Kennedy. I'm a freelance UX and UI designer, and I also teach thousands of students around the world via my online school, Learn UI Design. Okay, so today I'm just going to redesign this app in Sketch. And while I do, I'm gonna narrate a lot of the things that I think about when I'm working on a design like this, as if it were a real client project. So these are just kind of the tips and tactics that you can use in your own design work. And in particular with this app, I'm gonna be talking a lot about how Apple designs native iOS apps. So keep this in mind as a resource anytime you need to design an iPhone app. Ready? Let's dive in. Let's do the add transaction screen first. My first thing I'm gonna do is get a new artboard. Gene created this mockup on an iPhone 8 screen size, but let's use the newer iPhone screen size. I've got a sketch template that I like to use for this, which you can actually download for free at my iOS design guidelines illustrated article linked below. One of my favorite things about this template is I can set the status bar and home indicator color to white really easily, which is of course the iOS standard for dark themes. It also has rulers so I can very easily place a title where native iPhone apps default to, which is this top slot here. iOS titles are often 17 points big, centered, and have a slightly heavier font weight like bold. But I don't really like this boring kind of default font here, nor do I want Helvetica. Instead, I'll go to my own good fonts table from Learn UI Design and I'll actually pick a newer addition to the list. Bai Jamjuri, which I like because it's squared off and almost analytical feeling. At the same time, it's a little bit quirky, and best of all, it's totally free on Google Fonts. The bold uppercase version of this font looks so cool for the title. I just add in a little bit of letter spacing since like most fonts, Bai Jamjuri's letter forms were designed to play nicely when typed in normal sentence case text. When it's uppercase, it can be a little cramped. So 0.4 M's is kind of a good amount of letter spacing. Now let's get a text box on the page to see how that looks. I'm going to have it be 44 points tall, go from end to end with 16 point margin on each side, that's again an iOS default, and I'm just going to use the same color that the original app used. Having extra side margin like you see on the original app, this is closer to say 30 points here, this is a really common beginner mistake in mobile design. I always want to have pretty close to 16 on each side. For the label, I'm going to start by duplicating the uppercase title, which I do really like. Of course, a label should be left aligned and definitely smaller. I like to skip a font size when creating a new style, so this is 15 instead of 17. But since this gets extra visibility from being uppercase, I'm actually going to go down one more size. Now it's still really apparent relative to the title, it's kind of competing for your attention. So I'm actually going to make the font weight just a little bit lighter here, and I'm going to give it an 80% opacity. Remember, a single label is nowhere near as important as the page title, so it should always be much less visible. This interplay of making it more visible via uppercase, yet less visible because it's smaller and less opacity, is one of the most critical typography skills in UI design. I call it up pop versus down pop, and I link to a blog post explanation below. The text box itself should be default in every way. I'll use the default iOS font size of 17, give it a default weight of regular, a default opacity of 100% white, and a default case of sentence case here. Now we have a classic issue that comes up when designing form controls. The label is not really aligned to the value here. And yet if we align them both, then there's sort of this weird indentation with the label right here. I'm just gonna keep it like this, but you could probably go either way. Now we're getting somewhere with the text box, but it kind of still looks messy. And so I want to divide the header from the body content below in some way. The easiest way to do this is with white space, but if I add in too much white space, then I'm really pushing the other page content down and there may not be as much room on the screen. Another way to do it is with a background color, but a 10% white background actually kind of competes with this text box, so I don't like that either. Instead, what I'm gonna do is use borders and outlines, which can be totally overused by beginning designers, but we will be careful to keep them subtle, like 20% opacity. Now let's look at these form fields. For one, if this is a dollar amount, I want to make it clear to users. So I'll put the dollar sign with some space to the left so it doesn't look editable. And I'll give it an 80% opacity to distinguish it further. Whenever there's a form the user has to fill out, it's important to make it look as simple as possible in addition to be as simple as possible. And since amount and date are both really short fields, we'll put them on the same line to keep the overall form shorter and easier looking. 
For payee and category, the user has to choose between existing options, but it looks like they can also create a new option in line using these two links. But rather than clutter things up with these two links here, we're gonna use a picker screen pattern where they do all of this work on another screen that's linked to from this control. I talk more about it in anything but drop downs, which is linked below. So the controls on this page and then a chevron icon will tell the users that they can navigate to another page to make the actual choice. And I'll use the chevron icon from the material design icon set, which is one of the three sketch library icon sets that's included in Learn UI Design. To create a button, I'll start by taking the text box and then making only the exact modifications I need. This keeps things consistent as much as possible. Notice how bright this green looks. It's exactly the same green as used before, but it stands out so much more because there's so many more pixels of it. So we're gonna do a little bit of color adjusting and we're gonna reduce the brightness here. Notice that I'm using the HSB color system, which if you're not familiar with it, I've linked to my HSB primer below. By the way, if this green is our theme color, one thing we can do to make the app more interesting is saturate the grays in the same hue as this green. So we're gonna turn the artboard into our theme color and then we'll adjust it to be way darker, like 20%, and way less saturated, like 20% again. Now you can see there's a hint of green in this gray, but we can actually bring it down even further, the saturation. So it's just sort of a mood that complements the theme green, but isn't all that noticeable. Finally, we have the tab bar, which goes down here. All designers should know exactly how to make these. For the tab bar, first divide the screen width by the number of tabs, in this case four, and then make the text boxes take the full width with no side margin. Tab labels are the smallest text on most iOS apps. The default size is 11 points. And if you're designing a lot of iPhone apps, you should memorize these values. But for everyone else, I've got a handy visual resource for iOS font sizes, which I've linked to below. Since they're so small, we're gonna bump up the letter spacing just a bit more so it's easier to read. And we're gonna take the inactive tabs and we are going to make them lighter using opacity. 60 to 70% is generally kind of a good range. Any less and they're gonna look disabled. The active tab on the other hand, that's gonna be the theme green. Now we just add some icons, again from the material design set. Again, the active icon gets the theme color and the inactive icons should be lightened. That being said, if you go with 70% the same as the text, since there's more pixels of this gray, it actually comes off a little stronger. We can reduce it to 60% and it actually feels like more of the same color. This looks awesome. Now let's take a look at the transactions page. I always try to make my UI as consistent as possible, which means that making a second page is always easier than the first. We're just gonna piggyback on the same styles that we've already used. Let's rename the page and adjust the filter icon and edit text button to be more in the iOS style. And of course, let's update the tab bar too. Even though the rest of the page looks really complicated, it's kind of just the same thing repeated over and over. There's list items, sometimes multiple of them in a group, and then there's a header above. So if we can design just one list item in its header well, then we can duplicate it for the rest of the page. I actually think the text box label style works perfectly for a list header and the text box itself can be expanded into a list item. This is kind of the power of consistency at work. This list item looks pretty cool. Let's try duplicating it here and seeing if it still works. One sketch trick that I like to do is increasing the text's spacing so you only need one text box for the whole list. We want the line height and paragraph margin to add up to 43 points, which is the height of one text box minus its border. So far this looks good, so let's just duplicate this for the rest of the page. Overall, I think this is looking way better, but still a little boring and utilitarian. So one thing I would ask myself is, can I use color to draw attention to what's important? In my mind, the daily totals are the most important thing on the page, so I'll give them a pop of color. I could use the green, that looks cool, or I'd also, depending on other theme colors of the app, play around with something else. You might notice that these aren't the default sketch color swatches, by the way. I've created a number of preset palettes for Learn UI Design students, and I can often find the right color very quickly with just a bit of adjusting these. One final concern with these numbers is when you have a bunch of right aligned digits, if they aren't all the same size, sometimes numbers of equal length don't line up. So to fix that, I could change these to a monospace font or another font where all the numbers did have the same width. And boom, there we go. So overall, I think this is a huge improvement from these original two to the last two. It seems like a nicer, sleeker, more modern appearance with a cool font. I just love it. 
All right, and if you like this and found it useful, you can sign up to get updates whenever I release new content like this at learnui.design slash newsletter.html, which is linked below. And if you're serious about learning design, make sure to check out my online video courses, Learn UI Design and Learn UX Design. Learn UI Design covers all the visual design stuff that we talked about. The color, the typography, styling components, all kinds of things like that. Learn UX Design, on the other hand, is about creating usable apps. It's best practices around forms, navigation, flows, mobile design, and other strategies to keep your apps intuitive and simple to use. Both courses have tons of sample projects that illustrate the lessons, so it's like sitting behind my shoulder as I show you how a professional designer approaches every aspect of modern digital design. Check them out at learnui.design and learnux.design. Both are also linked below. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please leave a comment.